Hey, hello everyone. Here is the update for Thursday, June 10th. I don't know about you and your family, but life around the Styles family is certainly busy. Instead of attending our own kids' ball games, now that they're adults, it's attending ball games and involving ourselves in summer activities with grandkids and our grown kids. You know, a busy, crazy schedule filled with ball games, vacations, uh, VBS, uh, cookouts, working in the garden, lots and lots of things going on. Whatever your calendar looks like, however busy your life may be, let me encourage you not to neglect your time with the Lord each day. Spend a few minutes each day in the Word. Allow God's Word to speak to your life, to your day. Also, as crazy and as busy as your life may be and as easy as it is to miss a Sunday or two, especially since we now have live stream for each of our worship services, make every effort to be in attendance, in person for worship and Bible study on Sundays. You know, the enemy would like for you just to push aside going to church. He will use our busyness to fool us into thinking, you know, missing a, two, a Sunday or two, it's all right. So don't be fooled by the enemy. You cannot replace the benefits of gathering with others in person for worship and Bible study. Just as God's word and worship are vital to our spiritual growth, fellowship with others is as well. So if you're in town, be in church each and every Sunday. Involve yourself in those worship times. Involve yourselves in a time of studying God's word. Well, every Sunday around the church seems to bring something new. And let me share just a few of the new things on the horizon. Phil Corkin's Bible study class is going to be concluding their study this Sunday morning. And Rick Clock's class will begin the following Sunday, June 20th. Uh, Rick and his uh, class members will be involved in a study on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7. They will meet in the student ministry room. So again, that begins June 20th. The Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5-7, through 7, and they will be meeting in the student ministry room. Hey, I'm happy to announce a, a new member of our, our staff, the hiring of Brandy Miller. Now, Brandy is our new custodian for the church. She brings with her a crew that have already been doing an outstanding job of making sure our building is clean and ready to go each and every week. And we just welcome Brandy and her crew to, to the team. Also, something new, our Church Center app is expanding. It's not been that long ago that I was sharing with you about our new Church Center app and under Stephanie Hamby and Aaron Roberts' guidance. More things are being made available through the app, and I am excited to share a new addition to the app. Our Church Center app is expanding to include an online directory. Now, if you are a current member or if you've attended our church regularly for the past six months, you will receive an email from Aaron with an invitation to join this directory. Now, please know that this is uh, not accessible to the public and it is fully customizable to your privacy preferences. For those of you who are wanting a pictorial directory, hey, you can add your picture or your family's picture so that we can put some names and faces together. Once you accept that invitation, follow the setup instructions, you're going to find the directory uh, under the More column of the Church Center app. If you have any questions regarding the directory or the email invitation, you can call the office or speak with Aaron. Hey, I've been speaking with you about uh, our Mission Arlington project that's going to be coming up, and I just want to continue to bring that before you and remind you of the details. Uh, just Mission Arlington is our summer mission trip, which takes place July 31st, through August 7th. Now, I don't know if you've picked up. I've I changed the date. I've been giving you incorrect start date. So it is July 31st through August 7th. Mission Arlington is a mission project for everyone, not just students. Adults, you don't have to have a student in the student ministry to be a part of this mission team. This is not a student ministry mission project. This is a mission project for everyone. So adults, students, children, you all are welcome to be a part of the team. Now, children, if you are wanting to be a part of the team, you got to get mom or dad to go with you and serve alongside you on the team. This church has always been involved in giving monetarily towards missions, and this is a critical need. 
Giving to missions is extremely important and it is rewarding. However, if you've never been a part of a mission team, you don't know what you're missing out. I highly encourage you to pray about your involvement as a member of the team who will serve at Mission Arlington. I would encourage you to talk with Andy, talk with someone that has been a part of a mission project before. I'd be glad to speak with you. You know, hands-on involvement in a mission project is one of the most rewarding experiences that you'll ever be a part of. So allow us to share with you of our past experiences. Serving on a week-long mission team can be a life-changing experience. And as I've said before, and I'll say it again, I guarantee it. So pray. Make plans to be a part of Mission Arlington. Now, cost to serve on the team is $75. If you have questions related to anything uh, pertaining to the project, please speak to Andy and he'll have the answers for you. Hey, Vacation Bible School is just continually draw closer. July 25th through July 29th begins at 6 p.m. each evening and it concludes at 8.30 each evening. We've got brand new material. It's later in the summer. It's in the evening. It's starting on Sunday and it concludes on Thursday. Lots of changes regarding VBS for our church and community. But one thing that remains the same the opportunity for our church family to invite those outside our church to join us, to be a part of this experience. I want to encourage you to begin praying right now about who God would have you invite to be a part of Destination Dig. VBS is a great way to reach children, to connect with families who are not connected to a church. So pray, invite, come. Answer the question, who is your one? Something that's just around the corner, our family promise rotation will be taking place June 20th through June 27th. Please check your email for the Sign Up Genius to provide donations. There are still available spots, things that need to be donated. So sign up on the, through the Sign Up Genius and please sign up before our rotation begins. Again, June 20th through June 27th. I close with something to consider. You know, becoming like Jesus is not something that occurs overnight. It doesn't just happen in a few days or in a few months or even in a few years. You don't become more like Jesus simply by reading the word, uh, you know, through a, in a year, let's say. You don't become more like Jesus simply by attending church every Sunday or serving in the church or sharing Jesus as often as you can. The transformation doesn't take place through just following a step-by-step -step plan. Becoming like Jesus is a long, slow process of growth. It's not an instantaneous experience for any believer. Becoming like Jesus, it's not like you go over to the, the wall and flip the switch and presto that you've arrived. It takes time. It requires a lot of hard work. You have to work at it day after day after day. And there will be ups and there will be down times. Times when Everything is going great in periods when things are not great. As I've said to many people before, we are a work in progress. God is just continually working within us. And the work began when you said yes to Jesus and the work continues. And it won't be complete, completed here on earth. Paul offers this to us over in Ephesians chapter 4 in, in verse 13 where Paul writes, This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son, that we will all be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's Son, fully mature adults, fully devo developed within and without, fully alive like Jesus. There may be times when you feel as though you're just spinning your wheels, and you're not getting anywhere. and You don't feel as though you're experiencing any spiritual growth. And there may be times that you may even feel as though you're going backwards. You may have those moments when you, you get tired, and you're discouraged, and maybe you're ready to give up, just throw in the, in the flag or the, in the towel. Spiritual growth, spiritual transformation requires a commitment, a commitment for the long haul. 
there will be times when you see yourself moving forward, responding and reacting like Jesus, drawing on God's word like never before, and it, it excites you to see what God is doing in you. And you can sense the Holy Spirit's movement within you. And there are many things that contribute to our spiritual growth. Prayer, and fasting, and reading God's word and sharing our faith and worship both personal and corporately and Bible study personal and, and with a small group. There's accountability and confession and meditating on the word and scripture memory. And I could go on and on and on. But one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, to grow spiritually, you need other people. You see, spiritual growth, it, it's not a Lone Ranger experience. It, it is not to be that. Many people assume that they just need to be alone studying God's word or just praying by myself, or worshiping alone. But here's the thing. God uses people to teach us, to build into us, to hold us accountable, to encourage us, to serve as an example for us. He uses others to show us our dependence on each other is important. I recently read this. You cannot grow to Christ's likeness in isolation. You must be around other people and interact with them. You need to be a part of a church and community. And why? Because true spiritual maturity is all about learning to love like Jesus. You can't practice being like Jesus without being in a relationship with other people. Becoming like Jesus. You know, look at the Gospels and you see Jesus. He experienced solitary moments. But more often than not, Jesus was around people, whether it was one or two or three or 12 or, or a crowd. His, his example should speak loudly to each of us. We need our solitary moments, but we need to be around people. All the more reason I will continue to say to you, don't allow the live stream on Sunday services to fill your weekly corporate worship experience. If you are by yourself or even with your family, you miss out on what God provides for you, what provides he provides for us in these corporate gatherings. My prayer for all of us who are on this journey of becoming more like Jesus is that we will not avoid or neglect or miss out on all that God has for each of us as we open his word, as we gather with others for worship, and as we experience fellowship and everything else that he brings before us. May we involve ourselves with others. And may we allow God to use others as we continue on that journey of becoming more like Jesus. Let me pray for us. Father, we are so grateful to you. We are grateful to you, Father, for your word, for times of worship, for times of fellowship. We are grateful for those moments where we are able to be poured into, as well as for those times where we're able to pour into someone else. Father, I'm grateful for our church family. I'm grateful that we get to share life together. Father, I, I thank you for those times when we are able to get off by ourselves. We need those times, just as Jesus set that example for us. But Father, I thank you that you remind us of our need to be with others and how we benefit, how we gain from those relationships. Father, whatever it is that you provide for us, whatever environment you place us in, may we not avoid, neglect, or miss out on all that you have for us in those experiences, in those environments. Father, I am grateful for what you're doing in the life of this church. I'm grateful for what you're doing in the life of this church family. I'm grateful for the many ways you've used this church family to, to pour into my life. Thank you, Father, for all of this. And I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, thanks for letting me share with you today. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday.